Hey guys, today we're going to make a reservoir for an automated watering system using the Adoja IoT platform. This particular reservoir is going to water on soil moisture, but we're just going to show you the basics. What we've got is an automatic feeder sub-assembly kit from Adoja. Um, we've got the IoT board and the power supply. We've already connected the board to the internet, so we're just going to put that aside. Just open up the kit and just show you what we've got real quick to work with, and then we'll get to making the reservoir. So the first thing we've got is a a sub-assembly pump with a level switch glued to it. It's a little bit ugly, but it works really well. And that's gonna go on the bottom of the reservoir, and we're gonna use this level switch to tell us when the water needs to be refilled. Um, here's our moisture sensor. We're gonna use that to water on low moisture. Um, alternatively, we can set the reservoir up to water on cycles and by other triggers as well. But in this case, we're gonna use the moisture sensor. Okay, this came with an, an extra pump. This is if we were going to run two pumps. We, we glue this one down in the reservoir next to this one and either run them together. Um, but we only need one level switch because the water level uh, in this case is going to be the same. So we're not going to use this um, today. We're just going to set this aside too. We're only going to be using one channel because this implementation we're actually going to put into a customized self-watering planner. Um, you would use two pumps if you needed more power and you were going to... Uh, put together a personal cultivation setup for six to eight plants. Okay, so here we've got a, another level switch. We're gonna put this level switch a little bit higher than this one and orient it like this so when the water level drops below a certain level, it's gonna tell us that the water's getting low. So we're gonna set a protect action on this pump to prevent the submersible pump from running when the water drops below this point. That's why this is so awesome, because it tells us right when to stop uh, allowing water to, to, to come in so that's why positioning is really good so we'll position this one right above it that's going to tell us water's getting low this level switch will configure to tell us when water's empty so this is what we're going to be using for this particular setup respect these three components and this is kind of what we're going to start with what we've done is we've gone ahead, ahead and pre-drilled a hole down here let's go ahead and take this uh this 3m90 adhesive spray glue this is what we use to bond the plastic to the plastic it's really good for polypropylene type plastics for bonding them together so before we do that real quick we're just going to take some sandpaper and just kind of rub it on the bottom where we want our pump to be just kind of scuff up towards the bottom and just just it doesn't have to be perfect just scuff it a little bit and we'll do the same thing with the bottom of our pump just scuff it up a little bit it's okay you want it good and scratched up so when you put the the bond adhesive, it, it, it sticks pretty good. Then you just spray up your, your 3M90 adhesive and you kind of got to get it at 90 degrees. Let's see if you can catch me spraying it in there. You can kind of see it, it's bubbling over. You just want to let it sit for about anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half. And then what we're going to do too is we're going to take the bottom of the pump we're just gonna just spray a little bit on there, get it kind of good and fizzing. If you take a look at it, it's bubbling. Just kind of let that sit for about 30 seconds to a minute. Same thing with what we're doing with the bucket. You need a quarter inch inner diameter. You can use a, um, a, a dark opaque tube if, if, it, if light's gonna be touching it. There's not gonna be any light um, hitting this tube, so we're okay to use a clear one in this case, so algae's not gonna grow. So what we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and just attach the tube to the top of the pump. The water's going to flow in through this makeshift uh, um, kind of screen filter that we that, that that we've made, and we're just going to go ahead and this comes shipped with this with this this package. And we're going to go ahead and get it glued down in here. And the reason you put the tube on first is so you don't tear it off while you're trying to get it on later. So just kind of hold it on there for about. 20 30 seconds and if you can maybe set a weight on top of it just to kind of help it bond what we've got it you can see in the bucket um the the pump is kind of drying we're just going to let it sit and dry it only takes about 15 minutes or so uh, and dries pretty quick usually you'll want to let it dry a couple hours though before you really start to put water in it so what we're going to do now is we'll just go ahead and attach the water level sensor switch down here in the hole so we've just gonna unravel this little doodad here and we're just gonna unscrew the 
clasp and we're gonna slide it in and we're gonna put the washer on the inside let's go ahead and leave the, the rubber o-ring not washer o-ring there we'll just kind of feed this through here and we, we drilled the hole a little bit smaller than the outer rings I just kind of kind of what we did is we just used a 3 8 inch bit and kind of wiggled it around you can get away with probably a half inch bit or maybe even a little bit larger and so we'll orient the level switch like this what you want to do is orient it so it falls down when there's no water when there's water it'll pick it up like that now, and we're going to set the trick for normal or set we'll show you how to set it up when we set up a profile for this later in a, in a different video there'll be links in the description okay and if you want to figure out how to connect your Adozer device check the link to this this link right here that'll show you how to set your device up uh, and connect it to the Adozer platform if you haven't done that already go ahead and do that okay i think that's pretty good so what we'll do here is just kind of take the nut just kind of get some good pressure and you can see that o-ring's got pressure on it so that should be a good tight waterproof fit right there okay so what we've done is we've drilled a quarter inch hole here now we could have been a little bit more um, intelligent in how we approach this we could have put this level switch uh more oriented over here closer just so the wires all come together and meet the board so what, what we did is we drilled a quarter inch hole here we're going to go ahead and just feed through our pumps connector and our level switch that's now what we've done is the bucket's going to be tight inside our enclosure so it's okay we're going to orient our board pretty close on this side and this should give us enough room to connect everything we need to onto our board depending on where it is yeah okay so that's good so we're just going to let this completely dry down here and if we were going to use this uh this other pump here to create more power what we would do is, is we just glue it down somewhere close to it we take the other end of this and plug it into the second pump channel of the board if you look at the board this is where we're going to plug the first pump into here's where we're going to plug the first level switch into and here's where we're going to plug the second one on these two left pins if you can see them so we'll show you how to connect this when we're when we've got it all set up in the final device just wanted to show you real quick um, we're going to put this away we're not going to use this we don't need um, to, to have dual pumps for this particular application we're going to put this reservoir into but um, like I said if what, what we you typically do is just go ahead and drop another pump in there run another two join them together so you've got dual pressure and then you can water um, a, a larger number of plants off of the same kind of soil moisture monitoring if that's how you're doing it